This week, Supreme Court disapproved the injunction towards the drumline policy. Noongar Aboriginals demanded the state government to reopen the Swan Valley camp. Fremantle's legislation to reduce plastic bags returns. Plus, I don't like to share. A jealous Highland pony caught on camera. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lowe and Danielle Staniscom. Good evening. First this week, the court injunction against the state government's controversial bait-and-kill policy was struck down by the Supreme Court. Anti-shark coal activists argued the exemptions to kill protected shark species was not published in the government's gazette. But Judge James Edelman did not agree. Sea Shepherd Australia President Jeff Hansen and lawyer Patrick Perlman expressed their disappointment towards the ruling. Well, we're obviously disappointed. Uh, we thought we had a very good argument with regard to the, uh, uh, the validity of the exemptions that the state was operating under. Obviously, it was a, um, it was a very, comp it, it's a very legal, technical argument. We stand representing a large contingent of people that simply see this as wrong, not just in Western Australia, not just in Australia, but right around the world. The drum line will remain in the water until 30 April 2014. In the statement, WA Premier Colin Barnett has welcomed the court's decision. And joining us now is WA Men News commentator Howard Sattler. Howard, what's your view on this story? I mean, I'd advise the Premier to put a hold on celebrating this court win. It's only a technical one anyway. The facts are, since the introduction of the drum lines, not one white pointer shark, which we're told the most dangerous variety, has been caught. Which brings us to one of two conclusions. Either the policy is flawed or the white pointers are too smart for the hunters. I have more to say after the news. Danielle? Thanks, Howard. To other local news, members of the Noongar community demanded the state government to reopen the Swan Valley camp to accommodate homeless Aboriginals. The group held a protest outside the closed camp this week to make their point. A small group of Aboriginals gathered outside the Swan Valley Noongar community camp in Lord Street, urging the Premier to address severe problems of Aboriginal homelessness by reopening the site. We lost uh, family members. Mm -hmm. uh, through the living as homeless people, forced to live a harsh re uh, lifestyle on the streets of Perth. Back in 2003, the Gallup government closed the camp after incidents of rape, family violence, sexual and substance abuse. The camp's leader, Aboriginal activist Robert Brofo, was subsequently convicted of multiple cases of child sexual abuse. He had also been charged with rape and, in 2008, was found guilty of five counts of carnal knowledge of under 13, to whom he'd given money for sex when one was 11. His niece Susan Taylor, who was one of the girls from whom he bought sexual favours, committed suicide. Brofo died in custody in 2011 while serving a jail term for his crimes. The Aboriginals argued the report tabled in Parliament by Peter Foss in November 2004 showed the state government allegedly based their actions on false evidence. Labour opposition said the camp has controversial past, but admits Aboriginal homelessness has become a bigger issue. Well, I think the centre, uh, the grounds needed to be closed when they were closed. Uh, there were a number of tragedies at that location, uh, but in terms of the future of that site, I think we can do, probably deal with that the second half of this year uh, if there is a settlement around native title. However, Premier Colin Barnett has ruled out the possibility of a reopening. Will you seek to reopen that camp? No. Has the state government tried any other initiative to uh, solve the Aboriginal homelessness problems in Western Australia? Uh, well, look, that's a pretty broad question. A lot of work has been done to try and um, find better accommodation for Aboriginal people. The group plans to pressure the government by holding a rally at Parliament House this coming Tuesday. Patrick Lazarus, WAM News. The state government has granted more than $1.8 million from the Criminal Property Confiscation Grants Program aimed to benefit victims of crime and at-risk youth. The Attorney General hopes this scheme can deter teenagers from committing crime. Joseph Barker reports. 13 city councils and non-for-profit organisations receive funding from the state government to support victims of crime and to tackle crimes in WA. Groups including the Noongar Sports Association, 
Gosnells Community Legal Centre, WA Football Commission, Dungeon Youth Centre and My Place Foundation have received funding to benefit the community. I think that the money is being used for worthy purposes and it's only appropriate that uh, those who are engaged in criminal activity and seek to profit from it are having their, their, um, their money being used for uh, far better purposes. Eligible applicants can receive grants of up to 200000 Attorney General Michael Mishkin said the funding has been carefully approved by the government to ensure the best outcome for the community. Joseph Barker, WAMN News. Fremantle's plastic bag legislation has returned. Mayor Brad Pettit is optimistic the law will pass this time. The main difference with the new legislation is that instead of uh, having a mandatory 10 cent charge, the, um, that charge will be voluntary. So the same ban on single use plastic bags will exist and people will be required to give out either biodegradable bags or reusable bags. The legislation was disallowed by State Parliament in October last year due to the 10 cent levy. The Fremantle City Council is encouraging residents to voice their opinion on the matter. Time some world news. In Canada, the City of Calgary launched an action plan to consult citizens about the tax rates and spending priorities for the next four years. The Mayor Nahid Nenshi encouraged residents to express their views. Canadian correspondent Dustin Lowe reports. The City of Calgary has just launched an interactive action plan to seek Calgarians' opinions on the balance between services and tax in the coming four years. It aims at creating citizens' awareness of tax spendings and lets City Council form strategic objectives. The results will be considered by the City Council as they will create their suggested tax utilities in May. The consultation itself takes various forms, including online platforms, a mobile action bus, and 20 activities among different communities. Mayor of Calgary Nahid Nanshi visited the action bus and urged citizens' participation. But what's very, very important is for us to actually listen to the experts. And the experts of the City of Calgary are, of course, the citizens of the City of Calgary. The action plan would last for 19 days from 3rd to 21st of March. Dustin Lowe, WMN News. The Sport and WA Rugby League kicked off the 2014 season with a sensational launch at the NIB Stadium. Coaches around the state were invited on stage to introduce their teams. Former NRL players including Matt Cooper, Scott Prince, Ben Ross and Andrew Ryan also attended. Meanwhile, WARL CEO John Saxon said he is looking forward to the season. I think over, over recent seasons, the quality of the football locally here has improved, the quality of the coaching, the refereeing, uh, more players coming in from eastern states, uh, younger players coming through. So uh, I'm really optimistic. I think, I think the quality of the footy will be very, very good this year and, uh, and, and really looking forward to the season. And finally tonight, fighting for food is considered normal in the animal kingdom, but what you are about to see will amaze you. A Highland pony in Scotland is not too keen to share his dinner with the sheep. Instead of pushing him away, the pony asked the sheep to hurry up by wrapping his form around him. The hilarious incident was caught on camera in Perth, Scotland by horse owner Vicky Henderson. Miss Henderson told us that she hasn't seen anything like this before and she believes this will happen again when both animals share their dinner tonight. Interesting. And that's all we have for you this week. You can hop onto our website for the latest news. You can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And now it's time for the Sattler File. Good evening, Howard. Thanks, Ivan. Thanks, Danielle. I think Premier Colin Barnett would do well to put the lid on celebrating this week's court victory that will allow his government to reset the shark drum lines in the ocean off Perth. You see, while he can claim the laws on his side, and technically it is, the policy still lacks common sense and it's been spectacularly unsuccessful in catching its main targets, the great whites. Not one great white shark has been caught. Almost all of those sharks that have been caught have been more docile breeds, many of them under the minimum size of three metres. The fallacy of the Premier's claim that drum lines were the preferred option to protect swimmers off Perth was on show when they were removed four days ahead of the recent Rottenest Channel swim. Why, why did that happen? Well, with the so-called shark barrier removed, we should have expected an influx of the dangerous creatures, but for reasons that remain conveniently unexplained by the Premier and supporters of the drumline policy, there were no close encounters with swimmers, none at all. Following this week's ruling, 
in favour of a continuation of the policy, the government's in the process of reinstating the drum lines. The only certainty, hundreds of thousands of taxpayers' funds will be spent, will continue to be wasted till the crude practice is suspended at the end of the swimming season in April. I'll be back next week. In the meantime, check out WAMN website for the latest news and my blog at howardsattler.me. See you next week. Good night.